Now let's talk first, um, let's talk about your tools. Now if you're a hat guy, um, what are the main tools you need to have at home to take care of your stuff? Let's think about that. Um, first thing and foremost, get a roll of packing tape. You know, the big stuff, big clear one or a big brown, you know, roll of packing tape. Uh, I suppose gaffer's tape works too. It's just way more expensive, you know, uh, duct tape and uh, unnecessary. You know, it's very sticky, it works good, but get packing tape, make rings of it. Any big tape works, but uh, stuff like masking tape, and scotch tape, it's too slow. It's, it's not even worth it. You're better off with a lint roller. Um, but yeah, packing tape would be the right way to go because you could get in all these little crevices with, you know, with your hands with a piece of tape. Everything, all the little hard to reach spots in the corners and stuff, the edges. Um, with a roller, you know, I guess you could do it too, but you know, you'd have to kind of you know, not every surface is flat like that, you know what I'm saying? You want to flatten your brim, but you, you know, you can do it. You could just kind of like, you know, use a lint roller. I suggest getting some packing tape. Um, you don't really need much to take care of a hat, and there's like, you know, a 2 or $3 investment. Um, you make little rings of it. You get the sides, you get the top, you get the bottom, you get the crown, every last bit of dust. You could even do the band. You just pat it down. You can even wipe it down. Um, with wool hats, get the sides extra because they accumulate wool on the sides. Wool uh, gets dust on the sides. So if it's a fur felt hat, it's not so much. But uh, if you've got a raw edge, welted edge, and uh, that the hat is made out of wool, it doesn't matter what kind of wool, it's going to start, you know, that's also a way to test if your hat's made out of wool or, um, or fur felt. If you're starting to see it's like so linty and the sides especially are covered in lint, that's a feature of wool hats, not, I mean, fur felt hats get dust, but not so much on the sides, and they don't, like, attract it. There's no, like, static, you know? Um, just get it all off. Wipe it all off. Then when you're finished, you can get a brush and brush counterclockwise, okay? You pick up the hat, hold it by the leather on the inside. Okay? I'm not really grabbing it by the leather. I'm just sort of balancing it. And pushing it like against my palm almost, so there's no way it's going to fall down. See? Can't knock it out of my hand, hand really, because I'm pushing it further up my hand really when I hit it with the brush. So what I do is I'm hitting it and I'm rotating the hat to it at the same time. You could do the walk like that, or you could do the. Uh, I've got to pick my hand too. You could uh, do the throwing method where you just very lightly throw it, kind of like you're throwing it in there, you're letting go just enough to rotate it, you know. So I brush it, counterclockwise, okay, same thing on the crown, counterclockwise, the top, counterclockwise, all right. This is not going to get all of your dust off though. Um, it's really not meant for that. It's more to smooth it out and to get some dust off, but the packing tape will get most of the dust off. Um, you don't want to waste packing tape. You could just keep using a brush, but you'll never get it all. You know, there'll always be some, you know. Where with the packing tape, you can get it, like, just perfectly pristine. Not a tiny bit of dust. When I hand back a hat to somebody, they're like, wow, great job. I'm like, yeah, I just use tape, you know. Um, it does a lot, you know, so yeah, get the packing tape. Um, okay, here's another thing. Your ribbons tend to ride up, okay? And they move, okay? There's only a few stitches around there, so in between, you can take your fingers and push it down, and you can, if it's riding up and you're seeing stitches there, what I generally do is the karate chop method. I hit it right on, kind of like on the brim itself, on the band itself, sort of like push, push the band down, like that. Karate chops. So I'm hitting it right in the middle of the ribbon there. Okay, because pushing it is it's hard. You can kind of almost grab it and pull it down, but uh, you know, pushing it down is hard. You'd have to kind of like wet your fingers first. Like if you have a sponge, you know, and you just kind of wet your fingers a tiny bit. 
and just sort of dry it just so they're not wet but just tiny bit wet enough to grip this and then you can push it down you know it's kind of like you know um for karate chop method bring it down you get those stitches and there's occasionally a person wants to put a stitch down there because it rides up one of the reasons that happens is because the hat's tight and you're stretching it and what happens is this area that used to be at a right angle see that it's like a square like that pillow commercial right um, it's not a right angle anymore. You're stretching it and it's becoming. See what happens when you stretch it? It's like it's like a slope. Okay, so that band just has no choice but to just slip up that slope, you know what I mean? Because there's no angle breaking it anymore. Break, you know? When you stretch it, it rides up. Okay, reverse it. You could put a stitch in there if you want, just be careful. Pull this out, watch the lining, get the lining out of the way, stitch it and don't stab the leather. Start on the inside, it's not that hard. Um, if you're not sure of your sewing skills, take some little tiny little square of duct tape and cover the stitches on the inside and just really seal those stitches down on the underside. If you think you made some crappy stitches and you don't trust your work, well, it's a way of just giving it a little double extra lock, you know. Um, all right. Now, don't stack your hats. If you stack them, you're going to get these little corners that peel. You see them? Okay. You can fix that by hitting it with steam. You've got to get a steam source. Um, if you've got the, the flame here, make the hat over there. You know, flame, teapot, spout, steam, hat over there. Flame's way over here because you cannot have the hat close to the flame. Otherwise, way worse damage than, you know, most of the time, you don't even need to steam and stuff. But in this case, steam will help these wrinkles, okay? You hit it with steam, you get it nice and soaked for, I don't know, 10 seconds or something like that. When you feel it's nice and soaked, you take it and you just press that corner down and you hold it. You give it direct pressure and you just walk around like that for a little while. Keep it, you know, just keep it pressed. And uh, as it dries, it'll, it'll dry down, you know. So that's usually enough. Don't stack your hats anymore. You know, if you got to stack them, put rings in between them, hat rings. Make a ring out of foam or out of cardboard. Staple it close. Close there, you know, just a ring. Built with, stack the next hat on top of the ring. Um, all right, let's talk about sweat prevention. How do you keep from perspiring through the hat, making stains, and then the hat's got a huge yellow, black kind of ring around it, and it looks horrible. Gotta throw it out. All right. There's a few things you can do. All right. The lining comes out, okay? You just basically take this, and you just pull on it. They generally just come right out, okay? If they put a tiny bit of glue on it, there's barely any. It's just like they wipe it with a glue gun, like just a wipe just to keep it from moving around, but it's still, these are disposable, you can pull them out and change them. So just grab it where the glue is and then pull it from there. Um, you can change these if it gets funky. Uh, I've never heard anybody washing it, but I suppose you can wash it, you know, with like uh, cold water and woolite or something. Don't wring it, rinse it out, put it on a towel to dry, and no heat, no hot rooms, let it dry make the shape right before it's about to dry, okay? And let it dry in shape. And then at the end, you could hit it with some steam. The steam will get rid of the wrinkles. But uh, I've never, you know, we sell these things, I think they're 10 bucks, and they might last you like two decades. So every 20 years, you can buy a new one, and you know, we can, unless you're in love with the one you have, it's got a nice logo on it or something, and you can wash it, I guess. Um, that's gonna help, all right? going to help keep the hat fresh. The other thing is this band. Okay, That's the part that's basically making contact with your head. It's the only part. Here. Yeah. And here. My head's back there. Okay, when I go down here, all the way to the top of the band, my skin is touching it. But when you go up here, it's kind of like, not really. I'm not touching it there. You see? My head stops there. So this is designed for a purpose. The entire part of the human body that is touching the hat here and here 
has some kind of a ribbon meant or a, or a lining meant to absorb and wick the moisture away from the felt into the ribbon so the salt and whatever stains instead of going here and up they go into the band and then they go you know what I'm saying they're very absorbent so that holds the salt and stuff after a while when it's spent and it just it, you know you can't use it forever it starts creeping past that and then you start getting stains beyond it up here, little rings here, you know, down on the brim, and that you cannot, you can't get that out. Um, there might be some method that I don't know about, some sort of acid that you could bring it to, but I'm sure the EPA regulations are tough and nobody wants to have special respirators and spray booths so that they can clean like, you know, 20 hats a year. Um, it's a dying business, so nobody really cleans hats chemically anymore. Um, besides, you don't want those caustic chemicals up here near where your brain is anyway. You know, just take care of your hat. And you don't have to, uh, you know, clean up the mess. You know, just prevent the mess. Prevention is the key. All right. What you got to do is, yeah, this will help. This will help. But the thing, you know, also this, the sweatband, that can be changed too. All right, that's blocking like a good 80% of it, you know. That too, that will become filled up and kind of unusable after, you know, a couple of decades of sweating through it too. You can change the leather band if you feel it's, you'll know when your leathers gets gross, you know. It either gets weird and sticky or it gets dry and crumbly, but something, you know, it starts deteriorating or the paint comes off or something. It won't last forever, but you can get a good 20, 30 years of hard use out of it, or, you know, even more. Um, the thing with changing the leather is a little bit expensive. Um, you can also change it to a cloth sweatband, and here's what I do, okay? I generally don't change my sweatbands. I put this product in. Um, this is the Cap Banu, okay? Um, what it is, it's on the jjhatcenter.com website under accessories. Um, you go to jjhatcenter.com, then to accessories, then to sweatband. Just put that in the search. Sweatband. Or JJ Hat Center sweatband into Google search. This will come up. They're five bucks, okay? What it is, it's one side is cotton. Okay, it's like a cotton, nice soft absorbing 100% cotton. They're sewn here with some like padding inside. It's kind of like, you know, a little bit of like wadding or whatever you call that, like pillow stuffing or something, you know? And it's nice, it's soft, okay? The other side behind it is a sticker, okay? There will be a yellow, like piece of yellow wax paper covering the sticker. This one's been used already, but um, I saved it because uh, it's got some blue felt on it, but uh, I just wanted to show you uh, before I threw this thing away. Now, um, with these sweatbands, you peel the sticker off, okay? There's two ways to use them. You put them up in the front by the forehead, okay? And what that does, it blocks perspiration, and sweat perspiration never touches the hat ever. It never even reaches it. It's blocked. So your hat never even gets sweat on it. It's uh, There's a nice barrier there. Um, this is one of the only things that work like a hundred percent and it's probably the reason why my hats are 20 years old and I wear them so much, you know, hard, sweaty, hard work up and down the steps, you know, all year long for decades at JJ's. Um, I wear them hard, really hard and um, what I do is I put the sweat wicks in right before I feel it's gonna start, something's gonna peek through, like a uh, if I see something right here at the, like, um, there, like a little salt where the leather, you see this little shiny part, that's the reed. There's a piece of fishing line in there, okay? If you ever want to stretch a hat, okay, this is where you cut the reed. You see here? Okay, the reed goes there. Here's the seam in back where the bow is, right there. Just somewhere back here, make a little slice little slice, peel the reed away, and then look in there. You could take a little pin or a needle or the edge of a scissor and pull the, pull the uh, fishing line out just a little bit. 
and snip it, cut it. That's it. Just cut it and all the tension will be gone. Then when you start stretching your hat, you could do the over the chest method. You could do the over the knee method. But when you're stretching, you stretch only lengthwise and it'll work like a thousand times better because you broke the reed, the tension. It's kind of like, I always call it the ring of piano wire. So when you're trying to get a 7 one eighth over a 7 and 3 eighths, um, there's still that circle reed that you're trying to pull. You know, you're know, stretching the leather and this and that, and it boom, contracts, because that reed's in there, you know? Uh, it has some elasticity, and it comes back. Just cut the reed. Um, that's the trick to stretching. Don't put them on a hat jack. Don't put it on a stretcher if you have any serious stretching to do. Those things are for, like, a third of a size. Like, if you're 7 and 1 eighth, uh, and you need 7 and 1 eighth just a little bit longer over in front or something, or you're between 7 and 7 and 1 eighth, um, but 7 and 1 eighth is just huge on you. It's just, like, looks ridiculous, but you're right beyond the 7. So you could take that 7 and stretch it just a little. And, you know, things like small stretches, uh, half size, less than a half size, a third of a size, good. Okay, what happens with a hat jack is you're stretching just here. So it goes out, 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 out. So it's out here and then there. Out. It doesn't look good. Um, you're trying to hide the stretch and put the hat back together is way, way harder than stretching it. And then after all that, just messing the whole hat up, it comes back. So it's ridiculous. So uh, in order to make a hat stretch successful, you have to stretch like five times past, three or four or five times past your target. Um, so if I want to go from a 7 one eighth to a 7 and 3 eighth, I have to go past 3 eighth, past a half, past 5 eighth, maybe up to 3 quarters, stretch it to a double X. And by the time that thing shrinks back, I'm lucky if I got one size bigger. Maybe this 7 one eighth will be a 7 and a quarter. But, you know, going all the way there, eh, I doubt I'll get two sizes. You know, it won't go from a medium to a large. It might go better, you know, maybe a whole size. But you got to over, over, over stretch, and you got to keep doing it over and over. And, you know, and you got to, like, the leather will break. You have to uh, patch it. You just can't do extreme stretches. So if you have something that's two sizes too small, don't consider buying it. If you have something that's one size too small, don't do it. The only way you could do that is if you pull the sweatband out. You'll get one entire size. That's it. Or if you have the hat re-blocked. This works for felts and straws, but that's an incredibly expensive procedure. And re-blocking something to a whole size bigger or two sizes, you're going to lose so much brim. The brim goes down to here. Because these hats don't really stretch what you're doing as you're using the same piece of felt, bigger hole inside, you get less brim and less crown height. So the style starts to look whack. Um, yeah, don't do it. Unless you, you want a stingy brim and you're okay with the stingy brim. Stretching is just, I hate it. Um, I still get a lot of questions about it. So, all right, let's get back to the other off of this tangent and stuff. The sweat wick, you put it right up in front and it's a preventative and it keeps you from sweating into the hat. And it's basically the only thing that's gonna really keep the perspiration from hitting the hat ever. Um, it does tighten up the hat a little bit, it tightens it, but you could cut them shorter. You cut the ends off of them. So instead of being like 10 inches long, you make it like, you know, I don't know, eight inches or seven inches long or six inches. And you have it right up in the front of your forehead and that's it. Now, if you're bald or near bald, you're going to need, you know, around here too. Like basically, we sweat in the back and in the front. We don't really sweat the sides up, okay? And if you're bald, you might sweat the tip here too. Um, what you can do is, um, the tip, I'm, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming you have a, uh, a lining. But uh, for a straw, you could put a tip sticker or some moleskin. Um, Dr. Scholl's moleskin is a sticker with some felt on it. Put a little circle up there. Just cut a little teardrop or circle, stick it up on the top. It'll keep perspiration from making stains up there. Um, people with hair, you know, a decent amount of hair up there, don't worry about it. If you uh, have thin hair, balding, you know, 
tennis ball, Velcro head, shaved head. Yeah, and then you got to do something about the top of the straws because most of them are not lined. Um, and putting a lining in a straw is just too hot. So just make a circle out of uh, Dr. Scholl's moleskin and stick it up or a teardrop shave. You could uh, make your initial or something. Or uh, you could take some sweat wick too, but you know, sweat wick is black. It looks good on the sweat bands because it's invisible. Um, let's get back to that. If you want to make your hat bigger, the only thing that really, really works, pull the sweat band out. You just, just get it out, remove it. Okay, you're saying it's crazy. It's crazy, but it's your only option because one option, stretching it, makes the outside look completely messed up, almost worthless. Okay, and yeah, it looks like crap. Uh, but you're saving the inside. You saved your sweatbands. You got your logos intact and everything, you know? Maybe. The sweatbands crack a lot with big stretches. But not with small stretches. You can go one size. It won't stretch. It won't uh, snap a sweatband if it's fresh. Um, my way, you cut out the sweatband. The outside still looks perfect. Pristine. Hasn't changed a tiny, even nothing. It's perfect. The inside has no sweatbands, okay? That's it. But nobody's going to see the inside. You guys don't know what color the inside of my hat is, you know what I'm saying? Who cares? And then, you know, if there's nothing there but a black sweat wick in the front, that doesn't look bad. It looks like it's on purpose. You're like, wow, that's a cool hat, you know? You got that little guard in the front, you know? Oh, yeah, it's, you know, it's lightweight, you know? So you basically, you take a hat. Yeah, let me show you. Let me get one of my sample hats here. Here's a hat with no sweatband at all. I had to rip it out because this was Philip's hat. That was just not my size. And he had it custom made for like seven and a quarter. And you know, I need weight bigger. So I pulled the sweatband out. And what you can do, okay, is let's say this is the front of the hat. You get the sweat wick. You put it in the front, okay? Maybe half of this. Cut this in half so you got about six inches maybe seven inches, whatever. Just so you got a nice little horseshoe in the front, okay? Now it might be the teeniest bit tight the first day you wear it, but as you sweat in it and pat it down, that thing will thin out, okay? It, uh, it's not that big, especially if you have only a half of it like this. But what you're doing now is you're saving your hat from getting sweated up. You have a surface that's comfortable, your head could go against, and um, it kind of looks good. You have something in there now. So that's the way to deal with a stretch, with a hat that's too tight. Let's get the sweatband out, you know. Show a little cojones, you can do it. You know, take the leap, take it out. You take a little blade, okay? Cut the strings, cut the, the threads. Get the sweatband out and you pull the loose threads out at the end. You could even leave the lining in if you want. You could leave just the satin lining, but no sweatband, that works. Um, you could save the sweatband too. You could probably put it back in. If you got a problem with it, you just get a little like crafts glue or hot glue gun and you could just, you'll see there's a little notch where you can put it back in, but you're not gonna want to. You throw that bad boy away. Um, all right, let's talk more about, what else do you need as a, tools at home, okay? We talked about the packing tape, okay? Um, a hat brush, also a good thing to have. Brush, if you get a horsehair brush at JJ's, they're not expensive. I forgot what they cost, 15. Um, and some really nice uh, brushes. You could use anything. You could use a, a nice, like, stiff brush, something that's nice and firm. I even have like a plastic brush that's real bristly and wiry. I love using that, you know, with steam. It's good for long hair finishes and stuff too. Um, soft is preferred, but soft to medium to hard brushes, they're all fine. Just has to be clean and then use it counterclockwise after you tape your hat clean, you know, tape, pack and tape, get the dust off. Um, one other thing I use, yeah, like we talked about the sweatbands, it's good to get like, you know, a couple of these things. Um, you know, when they get dirty, you want to change it. Now the thing about these is, you may ask, why don't you put it in at the beginning? Instead of buying a 61, just buy a 62 or something, stick it in and compensate for that extra room. Sometimes I do that with straws, okay? 
and then I'll tighten it up in the back underneath, not in the front yet, because I'll show you why. Um, the reason is that these things, although they're the only way to, to save you from perspiration stains, they feel wet. They don't feel great, you know. They feel good for a little while, then later on in the day, as you've been sweating, they start getting wet, and, you know, and it could be a little irritating and stuff. You feel like you just want to kind of take a hanky, dry your head for a second, you put it back on, uh, you know, it's kind of wet. Now, not instantly, but it happens towards later on in the day, or, you know, if it's just really baking out. Um, but, yeah, so I'd rather have just plain leather against my skin, because you could take a handkerchief and wipe that leather dry and then put it on your head again nice and dry and sanitary it feels good if you're in a restaurant you're cooling off in the air conditioner you're like oh it's so nice oh it's nice and cool and you put you guys put back your straw hats or whatever okay and you've got a sweat wick in there the sweat wick is wet and cold from the ac and you're just like ugh you know what i'm saying so wait till the end of the hat's life, the later twilight years, when you need it. When you see something peeking through and you're like, okay, I need perspiration control, like prevention now. If I wait another week, I'm going to get sweat stains, you know. Um, as soon as you see the tiniest bit peeking through somewhere, it's like going to happen. Like sometimes it starts in a stitch. This hat has stitches. If you look at every hat, the ribbon has little almost looks like a flaw. They say, oh, what's that flaw? Can I get another one? No, I'll look, every hat in the shop has it. There's tack stitches that keep on the band, that keep the band on, okay? So those little stitches are cotton. A lot of times the ribbon itself is not. It could be silk, it could be polyester. So the cotton ribbon is more absorbent. So when you start sweating, the sweat travels through the threads through the felt, through the pinhole that it made when you sewed the band on, comes out the thread, and that little stitch that kind of doubles over, that becomes saturated with sweat so much, and the sweat is constantly going to that point that it starts pulling up and making a circle that gets bigger, 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 just from that stitch. So if you're starting to see that stitch is getting messed up, you're getting a little sweat pool, there or on the underside, it could start there, salt. It's time to throw the sweat wick in because you don't want your hat to get ruined. Um, so yeah, don't do it at the beginning. And again, buy your hats bigger. Buy them where you gotta pad them a little bit in the back, you know? Or just, you know, nice and relaxed, you know? Just don't buy them tight, it's gonna be a problem. Uh, you have less options, things like sweat wicks, adjusting the size, making it bigger, smaller. If the leather dries out, you know, in a few years or something. So that's another reason I go bigger, because I do use these too. Um, there are two ways to use it though. You can use it in front against your skin, which works as sweat protection. Or you could use it in the back, under the sweat band. You pick up the bands in the back, where the uh, bow is, right behind there. And you put this right against the felt, or right here against the leather. It doesn't matter because you fold it to the same position. I tend to not like to put it on the leather. i rather put it on the felt because when if you ever have to take it off, it takes pieces of leather off with it. Um, and, you know, yeah, it takes a little felt off of it, but the amount is like nothing. It's just kind of like, I don't know, it's, it's almost nothing. And it's got no effect on the hat. So I put it basically 99.99% .99 of the times you stick this under a sweatband, it never comes out. You forget it's even in there. Um, when it's on the outside, you want to change it because they get funky, you know, could get itchy or, you know, dirty. Um, but when it's underneath and you're sizing a hat, eh, you don't want to take it out. It's rare. Only if the hat shrinks or something and you need more room for some reason, then generally you snick off the ends or something. But, uh, you almost never have to take it, and if you do, it comes off, you know. This one was in that same place I took it out. Um, it was a hat that I had for years, and then I realized, oh, wait a minute, I've got a sweat with the inside. I pulled it out after many, many years, because now I like my stuff bigger. Um, yeah, we talked about the linings. At 
linings, they do get bunched up a lot. What happens sometimes is they just get kind of like, you know, like all scrunched up at one end. And people kind of treat it like the hat is broken, kind of bring my sick hat in for a repair. It's not really that bad, you know, it's not a repair. It's basically like what you gotta do is flip this up, okay, open up your sweatband, okay, take your lining, take it out, okay. Now, uh, let's fix it. This has to be like a cylinder shape, just like a, uh, Right, like a flower pot shape. It's almost like a mini, like a mini hat. You know what I'm saying? One of those koofy hats. And you can see the glue. That's where they glued the uh, very little glue they used to keep these things. Just a dab of a hot glue gun. If you're going to ever use a, a glue gun for this, don't dab it. Don't make balls. Because the balls turn into a little hard marble and you can feel it with your skin. You want to wipe it so that it's really thin and it doesn't dry into a hard pellet. So yeah, these guys kind of screwed up. They did the pellet thing. Um, but yeah, what you want to do with this is not put it on your head, is you want to steam it. You just got to get some steam, shake it over the steam, take your hand, just rub out the wrinkles, kind of in the steam, but don't burn yourself. What I do is I take a bowl of tissue and I use that so that the steam hits the tissue bowl, not my fingers. Um, or just shake it in the steam. Okay, once you get most of those wrinkles out, you're looking for this shape. Okay, if you can't get that shape, wait till it's cool enough that you're not going to burn your skin. Put it on your head. Smooth the wrinkles out. Or use something like this. Use a, you know, you got pots and pans or something that's the same size. Pull it over something like a pot, you know. And uh, between the steam and you shaking it, You'll get the shape back. Take your hat, you flip your leather up, okay? Just put it back in, look at the letters. You want the letters to face the right way, okay? What I do is I put it in the hat open crown. So I punch everything out. This is never bad for a hat. The only time it's bad is if, it, if the hat is wet and you let it dry that way. That'll affect the shape, but maybe not even then. Um, yeah, it's never bad to open a crown. Just open it. Do this when it's dry though. Okay, put that back in. You change the lining, flip it. That's it. Just flip it in. You don't have to put any kind of glue or anything. It's just not necessary. If you're bald or something and it's falling down onto your head and you're feeling it, I can understand wanting to glue it. What you do is you take a little bit of glue and you just dab it on the roof of the crown and that way you just, just glue it up like that, you know? Just a wipe of glue it will not affect the outside. There's all kinds of rough stuff underneath your lining, trust me. Stitches and glue. And it's under the sweatband and the lining, nobody ever sees it, and it's fine. All right. I think that's good enough for now. We talked about your tools. We also talked about um, talked about your most important tools of uh, a hat brush. The brim brush is good. Horse hair is really good. We got them at JJ's. Um, a hat box is good. You have one, a proper one with a ring inside for the hat to rest on the ring, not an empty box. Um, that's not a proper hat box. Um, you need the packing tape. You also need um, some stiffener can be good, but it's not something you need often. You can do this every couple of years, every three to five years. Your brim might get floppy. Um, I have videos on spraying. You don't just dive into it. There's a few steps. You gotta clean it first. You have to cover the sweatpants. Always pack, pack, pack and tape it first, you know. But um, hairspray. Get super hold, ultra hold, whatever, fantastic hold. You could use Suave, Rave, Aquanet. Any kind of ultra super hold hairspray you can get um, is fine. And uh, you give yourself a thin coat, let it dry. Don't get it on the ribbon. Don't get it on the, uh, the sweatband or any 
kind of sweat now. And um, don't do the crown. You just, just do the brim. One thin coat. Let it dry. You could do a second coat. After that's dry, you could do a third coat. But don't overdo it. Just do what you need until you start seeing control and it's snapping. Don't overdo it because you won't make the feel. When you overdo it, it starts getting a little cardboardy feeling. So you got to hit that middle point. Not so much cardboard, but not so much floppy either.